This year, 2024, will see the 10th set of parliamentary elections to the Parliament of the Croatian Republic, known properly as the Sabor. The ruling Hadeze will be seeking to ensure it continues in office into the future. Who are the Hadeze? What do they believe? What do their opponents believe? Who are the characters behind Croatian politics? And will 2024 be the year the Hadeze is finally dethroned from power? These questions, excluding the last and more, I will hope to answer today in this brief guide to Croatian politics. To give some elaboration on the ideology behind the Hadeze, I'm going to first pass things along to friend of the channel, Tomas Sablic. In order to understand Croatian politics, you need to understand one group, one political party, and that's Hadeze. What is Hadeze? Well, Hadeze is Hrvatska Demokratska Zajnica in English. It's a Croatian Democratic Union, and it was founded by Franjo Tudjman. So let's read more about it from a uh, CBC article, I believe it's a CBC article. No, it's a Globe and Mail article from 1990, May 8, 1990. And I, I can read it here in the Deseta Godišnica Hrvatskog kulturnog uh, centra u Vancouveru, Ujedinjeni Kanadski Hrvati Ogranak Kral Tomislav. So here, let's read it. To Canadians, here, I can't, uh, you can't really see it, but I'll read it here. Uh, to Canadians, Franjo Tudjman isn't necessarily a household name, but he may be the man who puts Croatia back on the map of Europe. Here's the important part. As an opposition group, the HDZ, Hrvatska Demokratska Zajnica, or the Croatian Democratic Union, first emerged, uh, well, first appeared on the world stage, first appeared as a political group, was first founded on February 28, 1989. Its root, however, goes back to the 60s. Remember that, the 60s. When Croatian intellectuals, students, and young party workers sought more autonomy for the republics and less federal control in regional matters. So now we must talk about the ideology of Hadeze. More specifically, the ideology of Franjo Tudjman. So, and what, what's the ideology of Franjo Tudjman? Well, it's the idea of Croatian reconciliation. Uh, the idea of Croatian reconciliation was developed in the 1960s. Do you remember that date? The 60s. What was happening in the 60s? You'll see. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to understand how the mood was in Croatia during the 1960s as I read what basically this text. Um, it was developed in the 1960s by Ustasha Kolonel and uh, General of the Croatian Army Hos, Hrvatske uh, Obrambene Snage, and uh, the founder of the Croatian National uh, Croatian National Resistance, Hrvatski Narodni Otpor, General Vjekoslav Vuburic. He points out that there must be a reconciliation between Ustaše and partisans, or partizani, right? Ustaše and the communists, and the sons of the Ustaše and partisans. Because they're the only, because it's the only way, they're the only people, Croatians are the only people to make Croatia free to make Croatia independent, right? Croatians need to be united. Regardless of ideological, you know, divisions, if they're communist, leftist, ustaše, nationalistic, sve za Hrvatsku. It's every, it, 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 all for Croatia, you understand? Regardless of uh, ideological bounds. That's basically the ideology, that's the idea. In order to bring the idea, to convey the idea of re reconciliation, um, I'll read an excerpt of uh, what Vyekoslav uh, Luburic writes. This is during the 60s. So just so you understand, uh, you know, how Croatians were feeling at that time. I'm talking to you, Istrians and Dalmatians, who fled to the partisans in face of Italian oppression and experienced liberation. About you, who still serve in Tito's army, and who protest that you cannot progress and continue your education while your comrades, your comrades from the other side of the Drina, i.e. Serbian people, graduate from the naval academies, come to your sea, take over the captain's posts, which for centuries were proudly held by your grandfathers, and so they push and squeeze you out of your position and steal, steal from you in your house, your daily bread. I'm talking about you. You have to listen to the lessons about swimming from those who have never been, who, ever been or seen the sea. <laughs> Look around you. How many Istrians and Dalmatians are among your superiors in the Navy? 
As that anecdote showed, there was a lot of resentment over the situation in Yugoslavia, which Franjo Tuđman would synthesize into the Hadiza. It was to be under his leadership as president, alongside a strong Hadiza mandate in the Socio-Political Council, that the Socialist Republic of Croatia was able to become the Republic of Croatia we all know today. It was his crucial role in assembling a coalition of nationalists and those Croats of the previous communist regime, taking control of the government and successfully waging the homeland war that not only led the Hadeze to be the most important party in Croatian politics, but the de facto governing party. In the decades that have now passed since it rise to power, the Hadeze has always managed to find a way back into government, making Croatia look sort of like a one-party state, instead of other political parties. There is only the ultra-Croatian supporters of Tudjman and his Hadeze, and those moderates who were involved in the de of the party into a more centrist European party. A party led by Ustasha sympathizers and former communists looks more like an organized mafia, as money can easily destroy one's morals. Hadeze, in one way or another, has been involved in almost every scandal in Croatia, as members and their family often get away with corruption without legal consequences, continuing to govern and continuing to pull well with the public. Throughout the Hadeze's years, the party's ideology has evolved from an ethnocentric Croatian nationalist party into something of a liberal conservative party, despite ongoing resistance from those who are faithful to Dujman's old Croatian ultra-nationalist and ultra-Catholic Hadeze and today its platform can best be described as similar to that of the German CDU. Needless foreign comparisons aside, their governing policy on the economic front involves corporate tax cuts, moderate taxes on the general public, and the prioritization of the nation's place in the European Union. The Hadeze wants a preservation of the nation's identity through the promotion of civic nationalism rather than the opposing extremes of racial nationalism and mass immigration. Socially, the party is content with the current state of affairs, which has mostly developed under their leadership. This means they oppose the expansion of laws guaranteeing gender equality, gay marriage, workers' rights, and environmental protections. Led by current Prime Minister Andrzej Plankovic, who is considered to be something of a bland leader like most top Adese politicians, they will go into this election polling well among the public, as despite issues of youth immigration, the poor job market, and the cost of living crisis, many middle-class Croats either still believe in the Adese's promise to continue the economy's steady growth and to hopefully reverse the aforementioned issues, or they are simply not comfortable with the idea of voting for any other party. If Andrei Plenkovich loses the elections, rumor is that Tomislav Karamanko, leader of the nationalist Croatian ring of the Hadeze, will take back control of the party and reintroduce the Dujmanist ideals of the Hadeze. Should this segment of the party take over, they would reduce their support for Brussels and end the current coalition with the SDSS. The traditional opposition throughout most of Croatia's history has been the SDP, or Social Demokratska Partija Hrvatska. The SDP represents the remnants of the old Communist Party of Croatia, which had to moderate after the breakup of Yugoslavia in the 1990s and the political revitalization led by Tudjman. In the wake of the triumphant victory of the Hadeze, the Union of Communists of Croatia went through a rebranding process, which saw the party emerge into the 2000s as a typical center-left party in comparison to the rest of Europe what happened to join the PES parliamentary group. Initially led by Ivica Rachan, the SDP and their coalition partners were unable to accomplish much due to political disagreements and were voted out in favor of another Hadeze government. The SDP would return to power under the premiership of Zoran Milanovic, who incidentally is the incumbent president of Croatia, and it is currently led by Beja Gerben and is the third largest party in the Sabor. This is because in recent years the SDP has lost its spot as the preeminent party of the left, as the new Social Democrati has surpassed them in terms of seats in the Sabor. Led by Davork Vidovic, the Social Democrats originate from a dispute within the SDP, where back in 2021 several MPs were expelled from the party for supposed insubordination. These representatives, spurred on by Davor Bernardic, were unhappy with Gerben's leadership, and they broke away along with others, thus creating a new party. These MPs, who number 17 going to this year's elections, view themselves as the true heirs of the social democratic program and argue that the SDP has strayed away from its ideals and no longer fights for the interests of the working people. This dispute has left Gerben's faction with only 13 seats. In actuality, their ideology isn't really that different. Both want reforms of the economy that come in the form of increased spending and programs to reduce inflation. In terms of social policy, the SDP is partial to immigration, the pursuit of social justice, and abortion, as well as other center-left ideas, and their support is largely concentrated in the north of the country, in central Croatia and Zagreb. The typical SDP voter 
can be characterized as being part of either the electorate carried over from the communist era or as a part of the leftist youth type that you can see in most Western countries to some extent. Long disenfranchised, these voters have become energized by the return of the aforementioned populist president of Croatia and former prime minister Zoran Milanovic. Infamous among Western viewers for his Russophilia and distrust of the Ukrainian war effort, it is to be his general popularity in the vague sense of bringing a change in the nation's Sadikadze leadership that will be the main drivers behind his campaign. Milanovic's return is certain to signal a growth in the prospect of the now reunited Social Democratic parties, who, in addition to others, will be backing his premiership in a coalition. And whether or not this is enough to propel them into government, only time will tell. Milanovic has been known for his rather direct and at times crass language, such as the time he accused PM Plankovic of being addicted to cocaine, or when he called the Minister of the Economy gay. Going against Milanovic's attempted run is the ruling of the Constitutional Court, which has requested that he step down from the presidency in order to run as a candidate for prime minister. Milanovic has accordingly responded with accusations of corruption and refused to leave the race. This, in addition to controversy surrounding the choice of a Wednesday for the election, may hinder his popularity. The list of parties set to support Milanovic's bid for the premiership include Focus, The Reformist, EDS, BGS, Centar, Glass, SSEP, HSS, The Workers' Front, the Social Democrats, and the SDP. If these names aren't familiar to you yet, that's okay. We'll get to them shortly. But first, we have two of the smaller parties in the Croatian government who have historically served in coalitions alongside the HDZ and SDP. First among them is the HSLS, who are technically the oldest party in Croatia, beating the HDZ by a few months. They are a liberal party who augment the governments of more powerful parties, filling a similar role to the German FDP, as both share similar free market ideals and have a history of supporting larger parties. Currently, the HSLS lends its support to the HDZ government, though in the past it was a part of Rachan's SDP-led coalition. The other of these two parties, the HNS LD, share similar politics to the HSLS and was a part of the current HDZ government and the older SDP government in 2000. Both hold three seats in the Sabor. Most, or The Bridge, is a sizable political party with a right-wing populist bent that originated in 2012 as a broad political movement, thus giving it the name Most, as it was originally a union of separate groups. Its platform mainly centers around championing the rights of the individual through economic liberalism and a laissez-faire approach, as well as family and traditional Christian values. Currently, the party is led by Nikola Germoya, and they hold eight seats in the Sabor. The DP, or Homeland Movement, is Croatia's answer to right-wing Euroscepticism and nationalism, comparable with the National Rally in France. They share several core tenets in common with most, like their intense loyalty to family values and belief in a relatively open market. They also often like to criticize the government's economic policies as being communist in nature. They support a reduction in the size of the government and argue for spending cuts while it's promoting a revitalization of Croatian infrastructure, particularly in regards to the agricultural sector. A key part of their platform is their anti-corruption policies, and they criticize not just the ruling elite of Croatia, but the intense corruption of its bureaucrats, whose jobs they would hope to cut as a part of their spending reduction. Initially founded by singer Miroslav Skoro, he has since left the party's leadership, meaning that the upcoming election will be the first major test the party's six MPs will face without Skoro. Mojimo, or We Can, is something of a typical Green Party. Founded in 2019 as a coalition of intellectuals and activists on the political left, they brought together an array of individuals who considered the SDP to be too liberal of a party. When it comes to their focus on environmentalism, they advocate for an energy transition and heavy investment into renewable energy. They advocate an increase in funding for social services like healthcare, education, welfare, and pension funds. The party has a particular interest in cultural issues, and they take strong stances in favor of the LGBT community, of increasing the influence of women in politics, and encouraging migration and anti-xenophobic action. As you may have guessed, their appeal is larger with young voters, and this has propelled them into leading the city government of the capital of Zagreb. Currently, they have five members in the subor. Their candidate for prime minister is Sandra Bencic. From this point on, all of the discussed parties are relatively minor, and while they represent a sizable amount of both the electorate and the seats in the Sabor, they are not highly influential on their own, with the exception of one, which I'll get to at the end of the video. For now, I'll begin with the Sovereignist Party. 
Much like the Homeland Movement, even having supported Scordo in past bids for the presidency, they are a Eurosceptic and Nationalist party belonging to the right wing of the political spectrum. Emerging in 2019 as a union of several small right-wing parties, their most high-profile activity was their failed attempt at a popular referendum to prevent the adoption of the euro. Headed by Marian Pavlicek, they go into the election with four members of parliament. Next up are the Croatian Peasant Party and the Workers' Front, two parties who combined account for another three seats in parliament, with two of these belonging to the Peasants' Party. The smaller Workers' Front is a party in the style of those like Spain's Podemos, and it represents an array of labor unions and workers' groups who promote a form of democratic socialism. The High SS, or Peasants' Party, on the other hand, is less radical, though it similarly advocates for the rights of those involved in the lower classes. Traditionally a more conservative party, the group has made a leftward shift in recent years, adopting more environmentalist and progressive positions. The centrist mantle is taken up by a coalition of three parties, Centar, Glass, and the SSP, who currently each have one member in the Sabor. All of them are relatively liberal parties, largely concerned with issues like freedom of speech, democracy, and a well-run government. And in your identical vein to the aforementioned parties, Focus and the Reformists are the centrist parties that are more populous than the other three, yet nonetheless share a very similar platform. Both coming in with just one member each, Just Croatia and Determination Justice are parties of the conservative right. Just Croatia is led by a former member of DP, Milan Verkulian, who happens to organize himself with two independent members of parliament. Determination and Justice is also led by a former MP from DP who left over ideological disputes like Verkulian. The furthest right of the political spectrum, one will find one of the oldest historic Croatian parties, the Hrvatske Stranka Prava, or the Croatian Party of Rights, which was founded by Ante Starcevic, considered the father of Croatia, as he turned the centuries-old dream of being independent again into action. His original party fought against Hungarian and Serbian hegemony. The party was revived by Dobrosov Paraga and Ante Paradžić. One of the most important actions of the Croatian Party of Rights was the founding of its military wing, the Croatian Defense Forces or HOS, which was instrumental in the defense of Croatia in the 90s. Three big names in the Croatian world have joined its ranks. Former host fighter, internationally famous for his mustache, Marko Skejo, a Croatian army general in Bosnia, Jelko Glasnovic, and famous rightist politician, Bruna Essi, an MEP representing Croatia. Infamous for his hostile encounters with foreign leaders like Macron and Trudeau, Gold Kusic's party appears to be much like the Polis PIS, the two having the exact same name in English. The party defines itself in strict opposition to the HDZ, whom it views as criminal and an organization that must be kept out of government at all costs. For a final note, the regional and ethnic parties. The EDS is a party representing the regional interest of Istria. It is socially and economically liberal and historically has lent its support to the SDP governments as well as to SDP presidential campaigns. As for that important party at the end of the video, here it is. The SDSS represents Croatia's Serbian population and is currently the only other party directly involved in government with the HDZ. Founded in 1997, shortly after Operation Aluya, the SDSS is likely more liberal than the HDZ when it comes to most issues. However, they take a particular interest in securing the property and proper reconciliation they believe their community deserves. And that's a wrap. Aside from some independent members of the Sabor and some minor political parties, that's every major player going into the 2024 elections. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you in particular to Tomas for his help in researching and editing this script.